Let's speak to Dr. Alexander Titov, a lecturer at Queen's University, Belfast, who specializes in Russian foreign policy. Uh, speaking to me from Belfast. Uh, good to see you again, Dr. Alexander. Let's take a closer look at these sanctions. They seem to mainly target Putin's inner circle, uh, rich oligarchs, government officials, even his son-in-law. Uh, why do you think the U.S. administration has chosen to focus on, uh, on, on these people? Well, I think that's a very good question because basically, I mean, you, you'd say it's uh, his inner circle, but... Um, uh, to many observers of Russian politics, uh, the list would seem rather random. I mean, uh, Viktor Vilksberg is not a particularly kind of close inner circle of um, uh, President Putin. Um, um, and it's a sort of big guess why he's on that list, but not others. So uh, it's uh, so it, I think the, well, the point the point they've been saying is that the list is actually quite random in many ways. Uh, that um, they can target anybody, so no, nobody can can feel safe, and that's really kind of worrying um, um, message for the for the Russian business essentially. That regardless how close to the Kremlin you are, um, you you can still be targeted in a very kind of severe way by the United States. Well, the Kremlin, unsurprisingly, has said that it's uh, going to come up with a tough response uh, to these sanctions. What kind of tools do they have? Uh, and what, what, what do you imagine their response could be? Well, I mean, they, they can't really do anything uh, in economic terms because Russia is uh, so nowhere near um, uh, importance uh, in terms of economic or financial power to the United States. Uh, so this there will have to be in some other area. Uh, essentially, um, I would be surprised that um, Russia would be uh, considering um, some revisions to its uh, arms treaties uh, with the United States, for example, INF treaty or uh, something similar. Um, essentially, kind of in, in, in Moscow, they see it as a kind of de facto declaration of um, economic war on Russia, and um, um, they will have to respond in other non-economic field because basically they can't harm um, United States economically. Uh, the other thing is, of course, the European Union, because Russia has much closer links with the European Union, and they would like, um, you know, would do everything they can to um, stop those ties deteriorating. But uh, we will wait and see. I think I don't think there's, uh, you know, a huge amount that Russia can do uh, well, to United States. At the what, what do you make of the slightly mixed messages we seem to be getting from uh, the U.S. president when it comes to Russia? On the one hand. You see policies like this, sank, uh, more increasing sanctions. And then on the other hand, we heard Sarah Sanders there talking about how they, she would like their relationship uh, to continue. Uh, what do you make of that sort of mixed uh, response? And, and is it confusing Moscow as much as it's confusing the rest of us? Well, I think what it, what it does is essentially you have, uh, uh, have two things. One thing is that there is a unified uh, United States establishment in foreign policy, military and political establishments which want to punish Russia um, as, as hard as possible. Uh, the president uh, basically is extremely limited because the relations with Russia is uh, entangled domestic politics um, uh, since the um, last election, your uh, American election. So his uh, room is very limited and essentially uh, he, he can't change uh, this uh, unified um, uh, approach to Russia pushed by the American establishment on all levels that Russia has to be punished um, 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 very, very hard. So uh, I think Russians basically kind of uh, more or less disregard what uh, Trump says good about them and just focus on the real actions which are extremely um, harsh and detrimental to Russia. Dr. Alexander Titov from Queen's University, Belfast. Many thanks.